Welcome to Open Source Options. Today I want to show you uh, the power that QGIS has by pulling on public data for base maps. And I'm going to show you how to do this with a variety of different styles of uh, base map services, uh, web feature services, um, raster services, um, fe uh, and then uh, feature servers. We're going to focus on a day. Each one of these has a little bit of a different way for loading in the data, and each one has some different functionalities once the data are loaded in. So let's go ahead and get started. To, to start off, I just want to show you how these are loaded in QGIS. So if I go to my browser panel over here, um, you'll notice that I have my file structure up here. And then down below, I have these QGIS specific things. I have base maps in WMS, WMTS. I have base maps uh, in XYZ tiles. I showed you how to work with XYZ tiles in the previous video. So go check that out. I'll link it in the description if you haven't seen it. It'll give you the beginner's intro to base maps in QGIS with Google satellite imagery. And then I have WCS layers here. Um, these are web coverage services. They're designed for rasters. They introduce additional functionality over the web map services. And then um, down here, I have ArcGIS REST services. This is a feature server. Uh, you can see we have feature servers here. Um, the particular server I'm using does not work with the OGC API, the Open Geospatial Consortium, but it does work with the ArcGIS REST servers. So we're going to go through these, how to add these, where to find some of these. These are all over the place. We're going to focus on the ones for the United States that we can get to the national map, but you can find these anywhere. And it just might take a little bit of trial and error to find out which one of these services your um, base map fits into. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to just search here um, National Map Services. And let's pull this up. If we go to the National Map TNM Services for the United States, this is apps.nationalmap.gov forward slash services. It's going to give us uh, some things here. So we have base maps. We have things like hydrography. Um, imagery, a topo, imagery only, shaded relief. Okay, so we can see all these different things here. Uh, we can come down with a land cover. We have NLCD canopy cover, land cover, shrublands. Um, and this is what I have added in, in QGIS right now. So if I zoom into an area here, let me just show you some of these layers. Uh, so load as we get in closer. Let's just come into an area down here. And Right now I have on land cover 2008. Let's see how this changes when I go to 2021. So you can see we definitely see some changes mostly in those uh, urban areas there. We can see some changes. I can turn this off and now I have uh, topography. You can see the topographic contours here with an imagery uh, underneath it. I can turn that off. You'll notice that we have some uh, terrain shading here. I can turn that off. And here we have elevation data. And these elevation data are served as a WCS. These others are served as a WMS. And we'll get into some of those differences here. All right, you can see this is being slower as far as the elevation data go because we're actually loading in some data we can work with here and not just basically PNG images. For now, let's remove all these and we'll go back and add these in so you can see how it is done. So we'll remove all those. When I go to my browser, to start off, um, let's remove our NLCD land cover. Let's remove that connection and we'll come and we'll add this back in so you can see how it's done. Let's go back over to our web map services Let's come to the NLCD. Let's get the land cover. Now here, we can just grab this WMS, WMTS link. If we click on this, it's going to give us information, an XML file. This is what we need. We don't need the actual file. We just need the link to it. So we can come back here, NLCD land cover, right click on the WMS, WMTS, copy link address. 
let's go back to QGIS, go to our WMS, WMTS layers, right click, we're going to new connection, and I'm going to call this NLCD land cover. This is the national land cover data set, I believe is what it stands for. I'm going to paste the URL, I'm going to say OK, and now you'll notice we have this added. I can open it up. It will load up my geo server web map service. And inside of here, I have NLCD land cover. And inside of there, I have these different areas, Alaska, uh, the contiguous United States, Hawaii and Puerto Rico. Go to CONUS and we can add it in for any year. So if I had the most recent for 2021, we'll just drag that in there. We'll take a minute to load. So there you have your national land cover data set pulled into QGIS. We can look at this for the whole uh, contiguous United States, uh, pull up any area you want, and it's just being pulled in from a webmap service. So we can look at that, that uh, land cover data. We can't see any values. We can just see the symbolization. We can go check out the legends online. Okay, so we can do this with any WMS, WMTS web map. We can load that into QGIS just as easily as that. Let's head back over to um, our services to see what else we have. I'm gonna close the land cover. Um, we're not gonna load one of these. These are the same thing, WMS, WMTS layers we can add in. Let's take a look at the WCS services, which are the web coverage services. These are for raster data. Um, let's go ahead and grab this ArcGIS server. I hope this is gonna work the way I think it is. Um, let's copy the link address and we're going to head back into QGIS now. Okay, so we want to add WCS here. I want to add this elevation layer back in. I'm going to remove this layer. Okay, well, let's just go check this out again. So we have the ArcGIS.com. We can also open this, the rests here, the rest services. See what that shows us. You can see we have this here. Um, once again, it's an XML file. Um, we'll try to load this ArcGIS server in the WCS option. If that doesn't work, we'll try the REST uh, option. Okay, so let's go give this a try. So we just kind of WCS, we right click, we do a new connection, and we'll just call this um, 3D EP, 3D Elevation Program, and we'll paste in our URL. Okay, it's ArcGIS.com. Let's see how this works. Let's say OK. OK, so I added in 3 depth here. And we don't have anything, so that's not working properly. It should show us some layers. So let's just remove this connection. I'm showing you this so you can see what trial and error looks like sometimes to load these things in. Let's go back to the internet. Let's copy the REST service. Copy link address. And let's go back to QGIS. Let's come into WCS, new connection, um, read it, URL, paste it, and let's try that. Now we have read up in there again. Looks like it's actually loading something this time. We see the spinning wheel. Hopefully we get some of these services to pop up. There we go. Now we have elevation, aspect and degrees, um, the aspect map, hill shade, multi-directional. Okay, now let's show you something cool we can do with the elevation data. Let's go ahead and pull this in. We'll just pull in the basic elevation. And this is where you're going to see the WCS differ from um, the WMS, WMTS, is we can adjust the symbology. So you notice that took longer to load. We can come in and we have our elevation layer selected here in our symbology. Now, if I go to NLCD, you see that we just have single band color data. We can't, we can't change anything here. If I change to my 3 dat, we have all of these styling options available again. So we can go to single band pseudo color, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to color that for us. We can change our color ramp even. Um, so we can, let's say we want to do something. Um, I don't know what a good elevation thing is. If we can do something like, um, uh, let's just try brown to blue green and when we zoom out it's going to come in to load we'll see these color variations come across so there you go you can see we can 
do some custom styling with this. So that's really the difference you get with the WCS is it brings in the ability to style these layers. Um, we're still not going to be able to like pull up our value tool and hover over this to see what the actual values in the map are, um, but we do get the styling options. All right, uh, I'm gonna turn this off, both of these, oh, I'm gonna turn that one off because it, uh, it is a little more data intensive to pull across. And now I'm gonna add in one more thing here just for some context as we do the next one. So let's come to our, let's go back to our services in the internet. Let's go to our base maps. Let's grab the USGS imagery only. I'm gonna grab the WMS, WMTS. I'm going to copy the link address by right clicking. I'm gonna go back to QGIS. I'm gonna right click here, new connection. I'm gonna name it USGS imagery. I'm gonna paste the URL and say, okay. So we'll add that in. We have our imagery here. And we're gonna pull this in. Okay, so there we have some imagery. I'm going to turn off the National Land Cover data set. Now, the final thing I wanna show you is um, web feature services. Now these are really powerful. It's gonna be even slower than the WCS, but it's gonna be quite powerful. I have 3D HP, the 3D hydrography project loaded in here. I'm going to remove this and add it back in. Now notice this is added under ArcGIS REST services. It took me some trial and error with the different links. I wanted to add it under the W, the web feature services here, but I could not get it to work. Okay, but let's get rid of this and I'll show you the differences here. So let's remove this connection and let's go back into the internet and let's see if we can find this. So web feature services, that's what we want. And it's not here. So theme overlays, did I miss it? Oh, web feature services. Watershed boundary. I know it's here somewhere to find this. We have theme overlays, hydrography. Oh, here we go. It's going to be in here. So if we scroll down, you see this 3D hydrography program feature server. We had 3D HP and we had the WMS WMTS option here. Um, and that's going to give us uh, just our map that we can't do really anything with. If we pull in a feature server, we can actually have access to the feature. So I'm going to copy this ArcGIS.com link. I'm going to copy this link address and I'm going to come back to QGIS and I'm going to come to my REST server, my REST servers. So any publicly available ArcGIS REST server, when you have access to, you can add in here. And so I'm going to add this. I'm going to call this uh, 3D HP, paste in the URL and click OK. All right, now we have 3D HP. Let's see if we can get this to, oh, we had a connection fail. So let's remove this connection, see if we can get this to work. And we'll come back here. Let's grab the, the REST service and see if this will work. Let's uh, copy the link address. Let's go back to QGIS. Let's do a new connection, 3D HP. Let's paste in the URL and let's click OK. Let's add it. Let's see if this loads. There we go. Now it's loaded in. So you need the REST service to add to the ArcGIS REST servers. Okay. So it's it gets a little tricky sometimes getting all this figured out. Okay. Now I'm going to see if this is going to work. There's, this is a new data set and it has some issues. So I'm going to try to add in this flow line. I think we're going to face some issues with it, but we'll give it a shot. So I'm going to pull in the flow line and I'm going to go to layers. And sure enough, you can see here that it can't connect to that data source, but I think we can connect to something else. So let's go ahead and let's remove this and let's go to the browser and let's add in, um, let's just add in like, uh, some hydro locations, for example, like a headwater terminus divergence, something like that. So let's add that in. You can see we're getting features added in here. I'm gonna just zoom into that area. Uh, let's grab the zoom tool and we'll just zoom in here. Okay, and these are gonna load in. 
let's zoom into an even smaller area so we can see some of these. Okay, so here we have a bunch of features. Now here's the awesome thing about this. Um, we're still loading these features in, so I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to pull my pan back up. I'm going to pause the video while these finish loading so I can show you what we can do with these web feature services that's, that's really powerful. Okay, so this is still loading. There's a lot of data in here, but we're going to try to do this anyway. And I want to draw your attention to something um, real quick. So first, if I right click here, you can see that I have the option to open the attribute table. I'm not going to do that because it's going to be a ton of features, but it is an option. We have an attribute table that we can open. I'm going to go ahead and select some features from this layer. And this is where the web feature service comes into play. So if I get my select by rectangle tool, I'm just going to come and select a handful of these features right here like this. Okay, and you can see they actually are selected now. And what I can do is I can even perform operations with these. So I can come and I can right click here and I can export these data and I can do save features as, and I'm going to save them um, to a geo package. And let's see, we have to find a location for these, um, which we can just make this a test geo package here. Um, We'll call this test 3D HP and we'll save it there. And I can add this to the map. So I'm going to just save these, say OK. And once that exports, it's going to take a minute because we have a lot of data here. Um, we'll be able to save these features out of this massive data set into something that we can use locally if we want to. So I'll just pause this while that finishes the export so we can work with this data a little bit more. Okay, so we've exported those data. I'm going to clear the selection now, and I'm going to turn off my hydro locations. Oh, it selected way more. It didn't just, oh, I realized what I did. <laughs> I didn't export only the selected feature. I exported all features. So that's why we have all these features. I took so long to export, um, I exported all the features. Anyway, um, we can... I'm going to get rid of this before I before I do something wrong. So let's remove that layer. Okay, let's go back and do this the right way now. We'll turn this back on, and I'll turn my selection back on, and we'll grab a handful of features, and I'll right-click here, and I'll export. I'll save features as. We'll save it to a geo package, and we'll save it into this one, and we'll call this um, a few features. And now we'll click Save Only Selected Features. And now we'll say OK, and this will export much more quickly. And now I can clear my selection here, and I'll turn off the Web Feature Service. And you can see I have that handful of features there. And when I open the attribute table, you can see that I have features in here. A lot of these are null. Like I said, this is a new data set. It's not fully populated yet. But we have all the attributes that are available in the parent data set. And let's turn this back on. If I right click here, let's open the execute table. This is, oh, it didn't take too long, good. But you can see here that we have all these features in the execute table. We can interact with this. We have them all here. We can select things here. Um, so if I come back and select some features again over here, and then I open the execute table here by right clicking, now I can change this to show selected features. And I have just those features I've selected. All right, so you can see how powerful these web map services can be um, and how we can use them as base maps to serve them over the web, how we can pull in um, web coverage services for rasters that we can then symbolize. Uh, there's a lot we can do with these. So if you want to learn more about QGIS, go check out opensourceoptions.com. Um, I don't have the courses there yet. I promise I'm working on developing some courses that are going to be free. They're going to be free GIS courses on opensourceoptions.com. Go over there. You can enter your email to be notified as soon as those courses become available. Um, and there's also additional trainings on the website. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. And go out there and make some maps.